take our pedal as well. My laws, my laws, my tax, my controlling tax. our borders. I also think that being part of the European Union and financially catastrophic and an effect of the European Union. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. May I, like the other speakers, welcome the opportunity that has been provided to us by Brodie's and the Sunday Times uh, for this hugely important issue. Uh, and uh, there might be competitions for who has travelled furthest to get here uh, this morning, but the borders was looking about as grey as this at uh, five to six as I left, knowing just how lovely and welcoming the Glasgow traffic would be uh, when I hit it about uh, 7.30 or so. Um, I'm going to start with a slightly unexpected thing, that I'm actually with John in one particular area, uh, namely that on a Sunday morning I dream of getting to nine o'clock before I'm disturbed. But with two young kids, uh, seven and three, that is a very rare occurrence uh, indeed. And I see Jason Allardyce here, the Scottish editor of the Sunday Times. And in my days in the Scotland office, can I say my Sunday morning was regularly wrecked by the things that he wrote in his newspaper. <laughs> and I'm so glad that's all behind me now. I now look forward to opening the Sunday Times without any worries about what's going on. Now, being slightly cheeky, I think I'm right in saying that tomorrow, had things worked out differently, would have been the day that we became an independent country, 18 months on from the Scottish referendum. And here we are thinking about another huge decision. 23rd of June, we're going to face the second life-changing choice that people in Scotland and elsewhere now in the UK as well have faced in a very short order. On the ballot paper, a straightforward question, should the United Kingdom remain a member of the European Union or leave the European Union? Which is why, if you're wondering where the slightly strange names for the different campaigns are sourced, remain and leave, it's from that Electoral Commission uh, approved question. Now, nobody really sits there thinking that. The, the real question they'll be framing in their minds is, what's going to be best for my family, for me, my community, and for my country, however narrowly or broadly defined that might be. And in that respect, I think John's right to take us to the point of saying, what's our, what are our instincts? What does identity tell us about that? We've got two, at least two campaigns on the go at the moment who are battling for our hearts and our minds. The Stronger In campaign, focusing on stronger economy, stronger leadership and better security as their three uh, plus points for staying in the European Union. Vote Leave uh, specifically challenging that and saying there are new global forces out there which are making the EU redundant, actually exposing its bureaucracy and the fact that it cannot actually respond to the big mega trends that you and your businesses grapple with every day of the week, that its outdated bureaucracy is stymieing what efforts we would, might like to take, and that we in the UK have lost control over key issues, as John uh, put it earlier on. The Financial Times is running, for those with faint hearts, uh, a poll of polls which uh, at the moment suggests 45 for remain and 40% for leave. Still quite a chunky number, 15% who are undecided. And over the next few weeks, uh, if you didn't think the battle was already quite hot, it can only get hotter. The question is how much light will there be <clears throat> in the process? Happily back at uh, PwC, as Michael uh, highlighted before, uh, we have been doing a lot of work with clients, but specifically on behalf of the CBI, you may have seen this week, uh, we published a report which responded to their request to provide a quantitative assessment of potential economic Im implications of different scenarios where the UK voted to leave the European Union. It's been much debated since, but there were two core scenarios that were looked at by the firm. One about a free trade uh, area negotiated with the EU that would be negotiated, it was assumed, within five years uh, with ongoing access to all the other 
free trade agreements that the European Union has around the world. There are 50 or 60 different trade agreements that we piggyback through our membership of the European Union. The second scenario that was modelled was a slightly more earth-shattering one where we don't secure a deal and we have to default to the standard World Trade Organization uh, terms of most favored nation uh, with fewer uh, protections and fewer uh, access rights than we'd have under a free trade agreement. The comparator used in all of this was to say that we take the revised 20, uh, February 2016 terms that the Prime Minister negotiated with his colleagues in Brussels uh, a few weeks ago <laughs> and from that use a long-term trend rate of growth of 2.3% per annum. Now, what PwC assessed was that there are kind of five big impacts of a leave decision. There's uncertainty uh, particularly during those first two years. The Article 50 of the treaties allows a two-year negotiating period, which may or may not be extended. And bear in mind, it would require all the other members of the European Union to agree to extend that period if it hadn't been concluded in that period. But during that uh, period, we assess that market volatility, whether it be financial markets, currency markets, and uh, equities, markets, and the like, and higher risk premium for credit would have a big impact on business in this country. Other impacts, we anticipate lower levels of trade and investment under these scenarios, a reduction in migration, a crucial part of the assumptions here because the Brexiteers, those who wish to leave, almost all uh, will craft this in terms of controlling our borders, controlling migration, and reducing both unskilled and, when we say by extension, uh, the higher skilled uh, uh, migrants that come to the United Kingdom and contribute, or otherwise, as, you, as your personal uh, view takes it, to the British economy. So there would be a reduction in migration. There would, of course, be a reduction in EU-oriented uh, regulation, although a question mark about how that might be replaced. and. Uh, most obviously, and again, a key part of the argument for those who wish to leave, a reduction in the fiscal contributions made by the United Kingdom to Europe. Now, some of the highlights from the modelling suggested that under the free trade agreement scenario, by 2020, so bearing the brunt of the years of uncertainty, GDP would be 3% lower than it is currently, but by 2030, 15 years away nearly, it would have stabilized but still be 1.2% uh, lower. And the GDP hit somewhere between 55 billion on the, the, the worst uh, uh, side of this uh, and 25 billion on the slightly better uh, scenario. World Trade Organization scenario, by 2020, GDP uh, is assessed to fall by 5.5% or 100 billion. By 2030, 3.5% or 65 billion. Again, the immediate period after uh, Brexit being the most uncertain and most challenging for everybody managing businesses. Impacts on unemployment factored in as well. Uh, estimate that from 5% it would rise to somewhere between 7 and 8% in the next three to four years, but falling back to the kind of current trend rate perhaps by 2030 but with overall employment somewhere between 350 and 600,000 fewer than currently because of the reduction in uh, migrants. There are a huge range of issues to consider in all of this. Uh, what I would suggest to you is that businesses need to be looking very hard at how well they understand their own markets, their supply chains, the regulatory regimes, and where their key individuals come from at all parts of the business and particularly where you have outsourced parts to your business. Knowing that and how much of an impact this would have on you is rather uh, critical. It's hard to speculate on how the law would change to fill in the gaps left by EU regulation. Um, I leave it to you as a business audience to judge whether the Scottish Government in Hamza's safe hands, uh, or the United Kingdom government uh, would 
leave that void with no regulation or fill it, and if they did filled it, what would be there? And then how significant the policies and budget changes would be as a result of the new freedoms that were offered. The transition period about where rights and obligations under existing treaties work out and new ones come in <coughs> is critical and very hard uh, to work through at a micro uh, level, uh, but still something that needs to be borne in mind. And what would the new relationship look like? How would labour mobility, how would trade and investment flows operate under any of the more likely scenarios that are available? So, lots to consider. My laws, my laws, my tax, my controlling tax. our borders. I also think that being part of the European Union and financially catastrophic and ineffective European Union.